But Kendrick is is the one person who we give the most ratings for who people don't listen to like that. And they don't rock with like that. That's all I'm saying. If everyone's Spotify raps comes out, mm -hmm. it's always Drake at the top of everyone's Spotify raps. Yeah. And then everyone's going to argue Kendrick. It's music. What you're doing is listening to it. So right. to me, I feel like, I think Ken Kendrick is extremely talented. But I feel like everyone wants to feel smart and great. And it's a great answer to have. When I'm like, when you're 45 years old, if, you, if, if you're bumping Kendrick on a daily basis, mm -hmm. that's I'll fine. Be, I will be doing that. You will not be doing that. I will be doing that. <laughs> You're on the country on a daily basis. You'll be on the Ice Spice and New Jeans <laughs> and the weekend. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. It's the Sound Bites Album Mode Live. Mm -hmm. We're talking about the music, the culture, and the internet, and how those three things intertwine to create the music culture that we have today. My name is Damar Grant, a.k.a. King Grant, a.k.a. The Bunny. And I'm here with my esteemed co-host, co-creator, Adriel Smiley, adrielsmiley.com, Adriel Smiley official, the godfather, yep. Mr. Smiley. Yep. Adriel, we are back. Unfortunately. We're <laughs> <laughs> we are fortunately back, but unfortunately covering the, the Diddy saga. Part three. Part three of the Diddy discourse has happened. P. Diddy, a.k.a. Sean... Uh, Combs, a.k.a. Puff Daddy, a.k.a. P. Diddy, or a.k.a. Puffy. A.k.a. AKA no Diddy. A.k.a. no Diddy, <laughs> a.k.a. Puff, is, uh, ooh, like, ooh, like, how do we even start this? Let's say, okay, let's start it with this. Mm -hmm. uh, Puffy's house in Miami, in Miami, and then it was on the East Coast and the West Coast. So he has three different places, got raided. L.A. and Miami homes were raided, yeah. Got raided. By Homeland Security. We're not even talking about local PD. We're talking about federal agencies <laughs> running up in people's houses, okay? Uh, his sons were arrested. Yeah. Uh, they were running through basically his entire house yep. to find who knows what he, they're trying to find. There has, again, in who is it? Cassie's allegations yep. or things that were recorded yep. uh, that were happening to her. So these recordings are possibly part of this investigation slash raid. And just overall, in general, the things that uh, have been alleged against P. Diddy, Puff Daddy, Puffy, mm -hmm. I would say are uh, warranted of a raid. And that's how you get a warrant. <laughs> I, I think this is probably going to be the moment people remember the most from this whole Diddy saga. Yeah. Unless there's a chase... <laughs> or you know he gets his OJ on. He was spotted at the Miami uh, airport. Airport, right? So I think there's still time for a chase. Yeah, it's still on the table. <laughs> but I think this will be the moment everyone remembers because I think this was the moment it became real to a lot of people. Mm -hmm. It's sad to say, but I think four months ago when Cassie, you know, accused him of sexual assault and sex trafficking, I think a lot of people believed it, but it was still we'll wait and see. And credit to Diddy. He did basically didn't say much. He mm -hmm. denied the allegations like everyone usually does. Mm -hmm. And he had been active on social media. Which is crazy. Which was wild to me. Yeah, that's and, insane. And um, I was following Diddy before everything happened. He was one of my few social media follows because he's always close with his family. And once it's happened, I said, I can't unfollow him now. <laughs> I, I got to stick around. I got to see it through, my boy. <laughs> <laughs> and to see him posting on social media as if nothing was going to happen to him, as if everything was fine. That was pretty wild to me. But I think that let's fast forward into the next thing that goes with this raid. Mm -hmm. You talked about seeing him at the airport. Mm -hmm. That uh, there's, there's, there's a close-up. It's so, so low resolution, but you can see his lip kind of curled up. Yeah. Like he's been crying. And um, the, the rumor is that he's fleeing. Yeah. Um, to Cape Verde. Yeah, there was that uh, his private jet mm -hmm. had been flying to Cape Verde. Uh, whether or not he was on it was a source of speculation. But then there was also the footage of him at Miami Airport. Mm -hmm. So it appears that he's still in the United States. Why the private jet was flying away, nobody fully knows yet. There is, I would say, speculation that there may have been um, evidence mm -hmm. on the plane and flown to Cape Verde is a place that doesn't, I believe, doesn't have an extradition extradition treaty yeah. with America. Yeah. So, even if it wasn't a physical, personal fleet, 
Mm-hmm. There was a, a, flee, a fleeing of some sort of material, possibly. Is that where Russell fled to as well? Where did Russell... He's in Bali. Bali, okay. Yeah. I'm like, make sure I know where my flea countries are. <laughs> that also doesn't have an extradition. <laughs> but um, I think there was probably people on that plane. Mm-hmm. And maybe Diddy's doing the thing that you see in the movies where, okay... Make sure the kids are safe first. Uh, um, even though that is children to get arrested. <laughs> but I I think why him fleeing is so important because mm-hmm. that um, blueprint, this is crazy that we're saying that blueprint, but mm-hmm. Russell Simmons is the, the modern version of that blueprint where you get in some hot water, there's some legal action towards you. Mm-hmm. It's some unresolved, some you, you know, get to a... An agreement, we'll yeah. call it, and then you disappear, and that has been what Russell has been doing this whole time. And why I bring that up is because there was that clip a few weeks ago of Usher hanging out with Russell in Bali, and everyone was kind of iffy about that. Usher has ties to Diddy. Diddy. If you want to do the math on that, you can. But I think this is different from the Steens. Because Diddy's a Steen. Yeah. That's just what it is. Diddy is one of the Weinsteins, one of the Epsteins. Epsteins yeah. He's a distant cousin, but he's one of the Steens. He's Disteen. D- did Steen. Yeah. Did Steen. And I think that seeing how they handled it, um, they maybe wish they handled it like how Russell did. And I think that is what I'm seeing from Diddy's behavior is he said, I don't want to end up in a jail cell. Mm-hmm. I don't want to end up... Dead? Dead. This is kind of the next... Um, move for me. I, I just hope that there's some way that they could stop him. That's, that's all I really hope for. Yeah. Um, I would say that when the federal uh, government is on your ass, they're on your ass. Yes, like yes, they're, yes. They're, you know, you don't just, uh, you don't just get to walk around freely for an extended period of time when, again, Homeland Security, like, this, yo, Homeland Security deals with terrorism, bro. <laughs> that he's a terrorist. You know, like, <laughs> Homeland Security is like, this person is a, a menace to society. We, mm-hmm. we probably need to figure out what the fuck is going on here. So I think that Diddy uh, is going down. Mm. I, I, would, I would say that it, he's going down. Is he, though? I think if, he's going If he pulls a Russell, is that really going down? Is he going to flee? He, he's definitely going to flee. You think he's going to flee? 100% he's going to the, there, was a third, there was a third beat to this entire situation. Yes, he sold Revolt to an anonymous buyer. Mm-hmm. Um, that... Is the writing on the wall that right brings there. flea to me? That yeah. says flea to me. It's it's giving flea. It's giving <laughs> flea. So when when you put those two those three things together, and the thing that I think is so funny is is I uh, I think we have such this uh, separation between what we see on TV in mm-hmm. the movies and what's capable of being real. This is very much giving Marty Bird in Ozark. Mm. Very much giving Narcos. Mm-hmm. You know we we've seen this before. You know the feds are coming to raid you. Get your plane juiced up. Yeah. Get all your money together. So what's the next step? Get to the airport. Okay. Yeah. Now we've seen times it goes wrong in media and movies like Queen and Slim, where it didn't go so well. Yep. But Diddy has, I'll say, a bit more money than them. So I I don't think that they're gonna be able to catch him, if I'm being honest. Okay. Um, Diddy's been doing this for a long time. I feel like he kind of has an upper hand on them, as in he's probably <laughs> thought about this. Yeah, um, but that that's my only one because I, I don't know if he'll actually serve jail time. We, we talked about it on, on Diddy Part 2, mm-hmm. but that's going to happen. I would like that to be the case, but ultimately, even if he's not going to serve jail time, I want him to be the whistleblower. I've said it before. I'm saying it again. I want Diddy to be naming names. Now, if anyone follows me on TikTok, you're going to see me in someone's comments mm-hmm. just uh, commenting name names. Yeah. This is that right here. I'm All I want is to name names, whether it's Meek Mill, Usher, Chris Brown, Cuba mm. Gooding fucking Jr. Yeah, he's also tied into I just, I just want him to name names. That's all I want. Yeah, me too, because uh, things like this, uh, these like sexual um, assault allegations, mm-hmm. these uh, rings that allegedly is associated with Diddy, it's not one person. No, no. It's never just one person crystal ball mastermind you yeah. know orchestrating everything it's actually a cabal of like people mm-hmm. um diddy seems to be the most visible yes. and the most uh, i would say the most uh like exposed yes of all the people that is that's associated with this but there was other people you know cassie also mentioned other people in mm-hmm. her lawsuit yeah. um i i 
would would believe that if Cassie is naming other people mm-hmm. and then also understanding these um, things do not happen just like with one person. Exactly. Uh, there's more people involved. A hundred percent. Right? Just like with, with R. Kelly. It wasn't just R. Kelly. No. He had a whole fucking district of people operating. Family too. Yeah, running this entire shit, right? So um, I do want Diddy to, to get captured mm-hmm. and I want him to name the people. I, I want I, I want, want the that names. I want that too. And one thing I do think that why that is unlikely is because I think there's a, a bit of a Venn diagram mm-hmm. of people who knew this was going on and people who were involved with it. And I, I think agree. that there's gonna be some finger pointing if someone does try and say, Oh, by the way, did you guys know so and so was doing this? Mm-hmm. It's gonna be some shaming and finger pointing of, Oh, so you knew this was happening the whole time and you didn't say didn't anything. Do anything. Yeah. And and I think that that's where the law of the industry is in a tough spot. You know, someone like 50 Cent has been making fun of Diddy for a decade plus, yeah. every chance he gets. And I think he, he's in a power position where Diddy has nothing on him, clearly. He's not scared of Diddy. But not everyone's 50 Cent. There are some people who are definitely scared of Diddy, even in this state. Yeah. And my thing is, will that change? I want to see, will that change? Will people get more brave and say, okay, he can't hurt me from... Cape Verde. <laughs> so, <laughs> so yeah, because will that there's, happen? there's even the rumors, the rumors, mm-hmm. allegations of blowing up, you know, Kid Cudi's car, Kid Cudi's car mm-hmm. uh, allegations of him killing other people to mm-hmm. keep them quiet and shit like yeah. that. So it's not like, it's not like, oh, you know, record label producer on the run due to sexual assault allegations. No, it's way darker, way, way, way darker than that. Way the scale of it is also much larger than I think. Mm-hmm it initially presents itself as being. So I'm interested on how much further it goes. Um, again, when the feds are on your ass like this, yo, when they're coming into your, run up in your house, like it's serious. And People don't just run up in your house like that. You know what I mean? I think the difference too, is that this was a, a tweet someone had that's funny, but I think there's some truth to it of mm-hmm. if Diddy couldn't save himself with his billion dollars, how is Tory Lane's going to fend with his 1200? <laughs> and I, I think that is where I, I think of this is mm-hmm. as powerful he is, as rich as he is, couldn't save him. Yeah. It couldn't save him. Couldn't protect him. Couldn't couldn't stop him from quote unquote getting caught, them finding him. So I think that there's there's a little bit to that. The last thing I'll say before we get into some juicier news. Yeah. Is Andre Harrell. Andre Harrell was Diddy's was Diddy's mentor. He passed a few years ago. Mm-hmm. I do wish Andre Harrell was around and I would love to hear what he has to say about this. Mm-hmm. Um on either side, honestly. I he, think he would defend Diddy, to be honest. I, well, Here's my thing. Those I, dudes definitely defend each other. I I I think that Diddy didn't. Um, this is learned behavior. Mm-hmm. And I don't, I'm not saying it started with Andre Harrell. I'm not insinuating that. But it was Andre Harrell one of those people who was involved or complicit mm-hmm. um, from the beginning because he brought Diddy into this business at 17 years old. And to see you know, kind of your mentee turn into this or become this person, yeah, I would love to hear what he has to say. But of course, he probably wouldn't give us a comment. Yeah, but. That, that's it. That's it. We can move on to the good stuff. Oh, well, the, one, one last thing is like, mm-hmm. this is all happening on like the anniversary of Life After Death. Yes. That's uh pretty crazy. Um, shout out Biggie Smalls. I, I'm sure someone in Homeland Security is a big Biggie fan. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they said, Let's get him. This is for Biggie. Yeah. <laughs> this is for Chris. Yeah. I I, th- I think we have to, to get to the, the real Twitter news that's been going on. Uh-huh. Um, We talked about it a little bit in our review. Yeah. Kendrick took some shots at Drake and J. Cole. Stepped on Big Sean's release. Yeah. Kind of rubbed his foot oh. in it. Irrelevant. Um, Future and Metro also took some shots at Drake. But I want to go back a little bit. And I want you to stop me whenever you feel is the right time. Because I want to do a little bit of a, a dive into Kendrick and Drake's relationship. Okay. I have a little bit of a timeline here. I think this is important because I'm going to say from the top, I don't think this is Kendrick versus Drake to me. To me, this is Kendrick versus J. Cole. We talked about it on the, on the Future podcast. Drake is in the Michael Jackson spot. Yeah. He is number one with a bullet. And is he? He is. He is. You he think is. so? He is. I don't think he's the best rapper. We're talking about greatness and what they've achieved. Yeah. He's number one with a bullet. He I don't is. think so. I I I I don't want to derail what you're mm-hmm. talking about here, but he, he is. I think what I Ken- don't think so. I what think Kendrick he, has ahead. achieved as a rapper, other rappers have achieved. Other than the Pulitzer Prize. Not the Pulitzer though. That's 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 what's one prize. But other than the Pulitzer Prize, other rappers have had Five classic albums, great run of singles, been very popular. 
No one has done what Drake That's has very done. Rarefied air, though. No, no, Five, no, it, it is. But Drake's what Drake has done, no one has done. That's mm-hmm. even more rarefied. But air. the Pulitzer is something nobody else has done too. That's that's great. But those Pul- are two different things. You can't say, oh, no, Drake, no, no, what Drake is no, doing. Nobody. But I'm done saying, it. just winning one prize and no one else has won doesn't make you the greatest. But nobody else has it. Nobody else has done it ever. The, it's just him. But that doesn't mean he's the only one who's deserving. I think this is from a different time when they weren't looking at hip hop mm-hmm. for that prize. So I said, I'm, I'm happy for him, but I'm not going to give the Pulitzer all the weight that everyone wants to give it. Okay. It's very impressive. But like I said, I, I think Drake is in a class of his own. He's where, 1A. Say it again? He's 1A. He's, He's what? 1A. Who is? Drake. I would say Drake is 1A to Kendrick's 1B. I, I think Drake is in his own category. <laughs> I'm like I'm, I'm I'm trying to be objective here. Forget okay. about who you like and your rap politics. Me too. I am too, actually. I think what Drake has achieved, no one has even coming close to. There's a list of the top most streamed rappers in the history of Spotify. Mm-hmm. Drake was in the 90 billion range. Number mm-hmm. two was at 47 billion. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Number two is is the most successful rapper of the actual physical era. Mm-hmm. So for you to be twice as popular as number two in in your mm-hmm. field, I think that you're in a space by yourself. Okay. And for me. I think that is part of why Kendrick always shoots at Drake is because you get more reps shooting for the top guy. Mm-hmm. He's, you know, he had a time shooting for Big Sean. That was in the past. But he is, he it feels more credible shooting for the top guy. Yeah. Now, why I want to go back is this, because I know you were there physically when this happened. Yeah. But I know mentally you were probably in a different space okay. because we're different ages culturally. And that <laughs> is the beginning of their careers. 2011, Drake and Kendrick kind of coming together. Now, Drake was the bigger mainstream artist first. Yeah. Take Care was in 2011. He already put out his first album. This is basically his first classic album. Kendrick was still underground at this time. Section 80 was in 2011. But Drake classic. said... Absolute classic. And Drake says, Kendrick, come on tour with me. You he and ASAP Rocky, let's go have, let's go have a, a time. He did it. Came on the Club Paradise tour. And I think at that time... This is part of where this beef comes from. You know, they're right now they're peers, but at this time, Drake is clearly the one who's up. Mm-hmm. And why I want to highlight this part is this is the this is, I think, the the era of music that many of the casual fans don't remember very well or weren't really there for. Because this was the era where mixtapes did numbers like albums. Yeah. And Section 80 was a mixtape that was doing half a million downloads on basically any mixtape site you could think of. Yeah, it was so popular that they actually converted it into being a full studio album instead mm-hmm. of just a mixtape. Yeah, exactly. And so at that time, even though Kendrick was the underground artist, the big three was already forming then. Yep. There was already an idea of Drake, Kendrick, Cole, and Drake was still at the top, but it was, they were seen as peers. Okay. Let's fast forward now. To 2013. Okay. Kendrick Lamar takes AIM on Control. Yep. Do you remember how you felt about Control and what that meant at that time? And like, yeah, what do you remember about, about Control? I remember, so I remember listening to Control in my house when I was like in St. Catharines, right? I remember listening to it. I remember the diss was, it was like a cataclysm had happened. Mm-hmm. Um, the way people were talking about it, I was on the internet. Uh, w- during this time, right? I'm always on the internet, mm-hmm. but I, during this time, I was really an internet, like a hip hop internet warrior. I was on the Reddit, I was on the Twitter. Hip hop, remember hip hop Twitter? Back, yo, hip hop Twitter was so different back then. But 2013 was a prime. Yeah, when people were like, remember people were like writing, uh, they were like writing raps in their, tw- as their tweets and shit. Like. Mm-hmm. But, anyways, um, when that song came out, that is actually not even technically released. Like, mm-hmm. again, it's not actually an official song currently. Uh, it was huge because it was like, oh my God, Kendrick is challenging literally everybody on the face of hip hop at this point. I mean, it was Drake, it was ASAP Rocky, I think mm-hmm. it was even ASAP Ferg, it was Big Sean, like everybody, Mac Miller, Mac Miller, Tyler. Yeah, yeah, it was crazy, right? And it was crazy because we we're like, holy shit, somebody's finally throwing down the gauntlet because it, uh, before leading up to this, mm-hmm. people were like, oh, the guys are kind of a little bit too buddy buddy now. All the people are, who are big kind of mm-hmm. want to collab. Because Poetic Justice, right? Kendrick and Drake had done Poetic Justice. Yeah. They also had done fucking problems yeah. by then, right? So they were like, oh, you know, 
it was sizzling. The beef was sizzling, mm-hmm. but it wasn't at uh, like a roast or like it wasn't even being flambéed at that point. Mm-hmm. And then because people they were collabing, they're like, oh, okay, so there's no beef, right? I th- but I then th- when I Control think- came out, it was massive. Which as much as I as I love Kendrick, he hundred percent ruined that song. What? Yeah. What are you talking about? If if you go back and hear that song now, and like, if you remember when it came out, Kendrick is on his own planet. Like if this was on the album mode podcast, yeah. we would have flamed him because Big Sean and J Electronica sound like they're rapping on the same song. Uh-huh. Kendrick comes in and is not on topic with anything that's going on. Yeah, and that could have been a great a great great verse, a great great song with him saying on topic. This is crazy. You're a Kendrick hater. No, no. Everyone, I think you're a little bit. Everyone, a little bit it, it, this is something you see. You were there. I, I was there. No, at the time, people were saying at the time. This was like a normal, like, it's not a hot take. It's a normal take. Maybe mm-hmm. it's, it's 10 years later, so y'all forget. But Big Sean and Jay Electronica had a cohesive song that they were doing. <laughs> and Kendrick said, fuck that shit. Yeah, I think, well, I guess, we again, we were, mm-hmm. I was more of an internet person at mm-hmm. this time. I'm like, when, it was, all people were talking about was the Kendrick verse. Nobody was talking, nobody was it, talking about Big Sean or Jay Electronica like that. They're like, did you hear Kendrick's verse mm-hmm. on Control? Yeah, no, I, and and that's I think what led us to where we're at now, where we had a lot of subtle shots going back and forth. Mm-hmm. Um, Kendrick took shots at Drake during the hip hop cipher when that was a huge thing. Yeah. Um, Double XL. No, no, BT hip hop award oh, cipher. BT hip hop was okay. Hip hop award cipher. Um, yeah, that was that was a thing before the oh, Double yeah. XL cipher. Yeah. Holy shit! I remember. And um, they wow. kind they kind of went back and forth taking shots. Subliminals. And I think that first person shooter was the first real shot Mm -hmm. and why i i like to bring first person shooter is because drake has been very famous for taking shots Mm -hmm. that people don't know are shots okay and now that we're after the fact again we're like oh this because i don't think when first person shooter came out we thought of it as a shot at kendrick did anyone feel that because i don't remember anyone saying that like either online or in real life yeah no me neither um i think it was just a cool it was just like a cool track Mm mm-hmm it was a cool track, and then J. Cole was, like, talking about the concept, the idea of a big three. Mm-hmm. But uh, it wasn't like somebody was taking a snipe at somebody else. Like, that wasn't really <laughs> what people were talking about whatsoever. And the one thing that I, well, two things that I want to highlight that I think, again, it's so funny because I think J. Cole's taking the major shots on this on this song more than Drake was, but we don't think of J. Cole like that. And I think that's part of why we heard these lyrics and we're like, eh, you know, it's not anything. Mm-hmm. Now, J. Cole basically spent his whole second verse talking about how he's the hardest MC. They argue K-Dot, Aubrey, or me. Mm-hmm. And then he says, the Spider-Man meme is me looking at Drake. I didn't think anything of that at the time. And I thought to myself now, if Drake is saying he's the GOAT and J. Cole is saying he's the GOAT, they're completely just excluding Kendrick out of this. Mm-hmm. And so I look up now, I said, of course Kendrick feel offended. You're excluding me, and when I excluded you first, yeah, <laughs> you know, and and that's kind of where he came back talking about there's no big three, it's just big me. Yeah, you go down, he says, everybody steppers. This is on the song like that. Sorry, on like that was where Kendrick replies on yeah. first person shooter. J Cole says, everybody steppers were fuck it then. Everybody breakfast. I'm about to clear up my plate. That's pretty direct. Mm-hmm. Everybody steppers and everybody breakfast. So we talked about Drake and Kendrick getting each other for all this time. This is the first time that I can remember J Cole stepping out. And putting his, you know, name in the ring and saying, I'm yeah. going to get at y'all too. Because J-, J. Cole had taken shots at no name. Or some people say he lost that beef. He lost that, that beef. beef. He, did, he did lose that beef. J. Cole doesn't lose any beef. He lost that beef. He, Hand, it was like not even a question. He lost it so handedly it was a joke. No. He was like, no name was like, you, you don't read books. And he did not respond. <laughs> I, it's, J- it's, it's, it's J. Cole. It's J. Cole. He, did, he didn't he lose. He got cooked he, by no he, name. He took shots at Kanye. Uh-huh. Took shots at Lil Pump. So, J. Cole has no problem taking shots. But mm-hmm. this is the first time he said, Kendrick, I want some of that smoke. Yeah. I personally want to see J. Cole and Kendrick go, go head to head. Because I think those are the two actual best rappers. Mm-hmm. I think as a rapper, Drake can't hang with those two. Okay. Personally, I think J. Cole is the best rapper out of the big three. I don't think so. I think he would get rolled by Kendrick Lamar. Rolled? Rolled, yeah. I think Kendrick. I think you. Under, I honestly think you underestimate how good Kendrick Lamar I is. I honestly think you're not outside enough. I think there's Kendrick no, Lamar. There's no way. Kend- Rolled. Yeah. Okay. Here's my entire scenario when it comes to this idea of big three. Okay. Right. Let's hear it. I don't even think it's a big three. I think it's legit. Drake and Kendrick Lamar and J Cole is a rung below. 
this is something that I've I've said to so many people, and I, I haven't found a person that can dispute it. When it comes to um, being like the largest seller of music or making being like the biggest hit maker, mm -hmm. right, of hip hop music, just music in general in this space, is Drake, right? The best Kendrick Lamar is the best lyricist. He's the best when it comes to when he's he's make con he makes concept albums, right? You, you don't think if you really think about it, Pimp a Butterfly is a concept album. Damn is a concept album. Good Kid, Mad City is a concept album, right? It's critically acclaimed in every sphere. There is not a single person that's like, oh yeah, Kendrick Lamar, whatever, right? He's a better, he's a better lyricist, better songwriter, right? He's a better storyteller. He makes concept albums. I have not heard a J Cole concept album yet, right? Concept album don't mean you rap better. And then, and then there's also the Pulse Surprise on top of it, which is literally an award for writing. No, Ken, Ken, Kendrick is great. <laughs> right? And then there's that. And then for Drake, right? Drake is, first of all, actually battle tested when it comes to um, beef, mm -hmm. right? He's one of the best hit makers when it comes to beef. Mm -hmm. Just beef. Make a song that's so good that they play in the club. And then also, again, the ultimate hit maker. So J. Cole is none of these things. These are the core tenets of hip hop. J. Cole is none of these things. His first number one is because he tagged on Drake's, Drake's track. You're you're a J. Cole slander. <laughs> like, what are we talking about? Like, he is not in the sphere. He's not in the sphere of either of them. He's not better at anything in the genre that those two those two dudes do. He's he, not. He raps better than both of them. He's not a better that, rapper. Than he's a better producer than both of them. Fine. I I fine. <laughs> I I think as an individual, he makes better solo music than both of them. I think if they all had to do albums on their own, no help, like no features, J. Cole's making the best album out of all three of them. I don't them. think so. He's 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 actually done it. None of them have none of them have done that. And, and I think J Cole's hit songs are better than Kendrick's hit songs. I don't think That's crazy. I, I don't think everyone wants to hear humble right now. I can't imagine you everyone being like, let's bump humble right now. I think if if you play Goth My Dick from J Cole, you're getting a way better response. I don't think so. I think Kendrick to me, why and why I personally feel like it should be Drake by himself. Kendrick and J Cole can battle for number two. Yeah, give me the, give me the give me your rankings of these three people actually. Okay, so talking about greatness, I think I think Drake is the greatest. Yeah, and then I would have Kendrick two and mm -hmm. J Cole three. Okay, and J Cole has a, has a, has an opportunity to you know make some waves. I don't even make think some he can, waves. I don't even think he can jump. I don't. How do how does he jump somebody in the hierarchy? You would have to. Kendrick well, one, has, he has to come at Kendrick's head. Come at Kendrick's head. Yeah, that, that would do it. And he puts out a, puts out a classic. I think those two things. Kendrick has legitimately three at least three classic albums. Kendrick at least. I, listen, I hate. To when, Pimp a Butterfly, Good Kid, Mad City. Those are classics. No, no, I'm not saying... One, like, it's a gold... He's no, no. a rubber stamp I'm, classic. I'm not saying they're really not classics, cool. but I hate going against Kendrick because Kendrick... I spent thousands of dollars on Kendrick. I've seen Kendrick yeah. live three times. I'm a huge Kendrick fan. But Kendrick is is the one person who we give the most ratings for who people don't listen to like that. And they don't rock with like that. And it's music. Mm -hmm. So giving so much credit for someone who you don't listen to like that, Kendrick is the only person in... in music history who we treat like that you can say someone's talented and they're great that's fine mm -hmm. but us trying to say someone is the greatest and all of a sudden we don't listen to them i think is ridiculous i don't think so because there's how often are you listening to bach and how much music how much johan bach are you listening to how much mozart are you listening to but that, the same thing applies to, it applies to anybody i'm just saying like it applies to any it's, it's like back in the day when it was jay-z versus nas i said if you're bumping 10 jay-z tracks on one nas song don't tell me nas is the greatest because you think that's the right answer that's all I'm saying. If everyone in Spotify Raps comes out, mm -hmm. it's always Drake on top of everyone in Spotify Raps, yeah. and then everyone's going to argue Kendrick. It's music. What you're doing is listening to it. So right. to me, I feel like, I think Kend Kendrick is extremely talented, but I feel like everyone wants to feel smart and great, and it's a great answer to have. When I'm like, when you're 45 years old, if, you, if, if you're bumping Kendrick on a daily basis, mm -hmm. that's I'll fine. Be, I'll be doing that. You will not be doing that. I will be doing that. <laughs> You're always catching on a daily basis. You'll be bumping Ice Spice at New Jeans <laughs> and The Weeknd. I will, be, I will be bumping The Weeknd and Kendrick Lamar on the daily when I'm 45 yeah. years old. So it's like, I think Kendrick is great in his own right, mm -hmm. but I think that we're, the space between Drake and Kendrick in terms of influence and all the other things mm -hmm. is vast. And Kendrick gets the bump from being the anti-Drake. And again, everyone stands behind him as, okay, I don't think Drake is all these things, but Kendrick is. Right. So I'll stand behind Kendrick. Okay. We can just say the great is flawed because to me, I I, I think sometimes, however the greatest, is sometimes a flawed argument even if they are the greatest. Mm -hmm. I think about it with Jay-Z now. At this point, 
Nas might have more better albums than Jay Z yeah, in total. There's nothing Nas is gonna do to overtake Jay Z as the greatest. Yeah. That's not happening. But by the Kendrick metric y'all are using, Nas could be the GOAT instead of Jay Z. Yeah. I would say that when we're talking about great the greatest, I would mm-hmm. say that um I think that Drake probably ranks above Kendrick Lamar because Drake's also has like um insane artistic influence. Yeah. Like, there's so many artists that um exist because of Drake. And I feel like the when it comes to Kendrick Lamar, there's less of those people. There's right. none of those. It's like Jid J- J- and K- <laughs> Baby Keem, and that's kind of it. There, there's a stat that said Drake has given 32 artists their highest charting song yeah. ever. That sounds like someone who's the greatest. <laughs> you right. know, that, 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 that so sounds- to me, that's what I'm saying. Like that, If you use that stat alone of 32 artists, that's a yeah. lot of artists, I their know. highest charting position ever, that person, is, to me, should be the greatest if right. you're being objective. So to put someone who's... Because Kendrick, yeah. honestly, is in the morass of everybody else. He's not the... Let me t- the I'm, morass of everybody else. By, no, but by your metrics. By sales, he's in the morass of everyone else. By in terms of... In terms Artistic of value? Classic albums? Yep. Yeah. Morass of everybody else. No, come on. Not, come on now. Come on now. Come on now. That's insanity. He that's knows. actually insane. It, he's not, he's not the, no, he's not the only one classic album. That's but my he has thing. Three, he has at least... He has not released an uh, an album that is worse than like a seven. No, his albums are all great. He has incredible... Someone, to- someone told yeah. me literally a year ago that Freddie Gibbs had three classic albums. So Freddie Gibbs and Kendrick Lamar are equal? No, that's my, that's my that's that's my point. Your your case is classic albums, and listen, I'm saying listen there to are me lesser artists have classic albums. Listen to me a second. Okay. Like classic albums alone does not make you the greatest. Hang on, he's very good. That's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> that is actually crazy. Here's the thing, okay? When we're talking about who's the best or greatest, right? Versus best versus greatest is also mm. a different argument. But we're talking about greatest, or we're talking about this top three concept. Yes, right. There's multiple factors that go into it, mm-hmm. right? If you're a Drake fan, right, or you're a Drake stan, or you're a Drake number oneer, yes, <laughs> you're like, you know, the amount of sales astronomical. Mm-hmm. We're talking about his comparison to Michael Jackson, the Beatles, at this point, yeah, right. His artistic influence as just like his uh, what he introduced to the mainstream or the mm-hmm. idea of hip hop, then the people that descended from him is immense, yeah, right. But his quality of music when compared to his contemporaries, the three, the other mm-hmm. three dudes, the other two dudes, sorry, really the other other dude yeah. to me, um, is not is not as is not as good. Right? No, think, hold it. Wait, you been talking about that. Oh, hang on, bro. <laughs> okay. The audio must have heard that table slam. <laughs> <laughs> when it comes to uh like the albums, I would say Drake has Take Care, mm-hmm. something uh so far gone, nothing was the same. Those are the staples. Yeah. Right? Anything outside of that um, is just is literally just not as good as those as those albums, yeah. right? And they're not they're not even like most of them are like not good, like they're mm-hmm. mediocre. Yeah, right. When you come to like Kendrick Lamar, Kendrick Lamar is not as a huge seller as Drake. We all know this, yeah, because it's empirical data. Yes, right. But when we're coming to like the quality of the music, is it's surpassing like it's the consistency, and then also it's like not even like. Oh, this is very good. You're like, no, this is like defining albums of the genre. Like things like Good Kid, Mad City, and To Pimp a Butterfly are like define. Like these are defining albums. Like when you're introducing somebody, mm-hmm. it's like, hey, I want to start listening to hip hop. Good Kid, Mad City is one of the albums. Like Good I, Kid, Mad I City, agree. Illmatic, and like uh, Reasonable Doubt. I agree. Right. Notice how I did not mention a Drake album. Like, <laughs> you know? Drake, Drake will probably never have an album as good as Good Kid, Mad City. So that's what I'm talking about. So when you're like, oh, you know, so but, obviously but the, the, ahead, the, the, I'm like, not really. Because like when we're talking about artistic value to the genre, like mm-hmm. actually creating masterful works, Kendrick Lamar has the consistency of them and then the, the plurality of them is insane. I, I don't think anyone can, can really hang with Kendrick when it comes to how good it, the art he makes is. I right. think that every album he does, even if you want to talk about Damn or the Untitled Project, yeah. every every project he puts out is going to be top, top quality regardless. So that's not even what I'm trying to argue because I think it, that's a crazy argument to make that Kendrick Lamar doesn't make high quality music. Right. I think that, again, this is my point, he's getting propped up by being the anti-Drake because I don't think everyone is listening to Kendrick Lamar like how they're talking about his music. I think how you talk about his to, music. But you don't have to listen to it all the time to recognize no, this incredible. Yo, I, I love The Weeknd. Yeah. I don't listen to The Weeknd that much. But what I'm saying, what I'm saying is, is it's music. Well, here's my, here's my, here's my, my thought on this. Yeah. I think that if Drake was in the morass of everyone else with mm-hmm. all the other things, 
Kendrick would be uh, be the the goat for me by a mile. I think because Drake is the goat in all the other things, mm-hmm. and no one is close to him, mm-hmm. that's like Michael Jackson. It's like if there's no Michael Jackson, Prince could be easily the greatest pop star, right. and we think of Prince as all that. But because there's this other guy who he puts out an album with twelve songs and they all go mm-hmm. platinum, mm-hmm. you know what you're doing is not as the same. So that's all it is. It's not like Kendrick is is because Kendrick I think is ahead of everyone else in terms of like his catalog and everything. Mm-hmm. Pretty clearly. But I think because Drake has such a space between everyone else and everything else, that's that's why I say he should be in his own category. Because it, what he's done in hip-hop has never been done, probably will never be done. And what Kendrick's done in hip-hop mm-hmm. is very, very, very impressive. But we have had artists who have been critically acclaimed by every album before. That's right. happened before. We have never seen an artist who has doubled the amount of the highest selling artists of all time. Right. We have never seen someone who is breaking records in the whole Billboard charts. Right. We've not had that. So to me, if you're maybe the best Billboard artist of all time, one of the best selling artists of all time mm-hmm. as a rapper, you're the GOAT. Whether I agree with you as a better rapper than Kendrick, mm-hmm. I, I'm not, I would never say that. Because to me, Ken, Drake can't hang with Kendrick or J. Cole when it comes to actual rapping. Right. I don't, I don't think he's in that group. But... The space between and you know what's funny? I'm not a LeBron fan, but the more that this Drake Kendrick stuff comes up, yeah, the, the Drake LeBron comparison becomes even more. <laughs> no, it, it really does yes. because there's so many things where you have a good season and it's a regular LeBron season for you, yeah. or you know, okay, I I worked hard, I made a couple of conference finals. LeBron's made ten finals in a row. Mm-hmm. That's kind of what Drake is, where it's like, okay, the space between him and number two is so far. Right. So for me, I I feel like Kendrick is doing the right thing, even though. I'm calling him out on it in a sense. He's doing the right thing by shooting at Drake. Like, mm-hmm. you're only going to get your more props by shooting at number one. Yeah. So I think that is a reason why he's taking all these shots at Drake and not shooting at J. Cole all the time. Right. I, yeah, because I think I do think that he is clear of J. Cole. I think both of them are clear of J. Cole. Mm-hmm. I actually really think they are um, for different. I already outlined both mm-hmm. reasons. Um, I think that to Kendrick Lamar, to kind of explain his rationality mm-hmm. um, around Really, it's really this one bar where it's like, you know, big three, like, motherfucker, big three, it's mm. big me. I think his rationality is like, to him, he is like almost offended that people are considering the other two people in Which is them. wild to me. I don't think it's, I think he, he you know what I'm saying? Because he I knows, th- he knows us, he knows why that is. I think he's he, in the music industry. Yeah, yeah, obviously. But I think that he's, um, he views it from like just like a strictly hip hop space. Right, and I think there's a clashing ideals of like, you know, he's anti Drake. I don't think he's anti Drake though, because you know, they existed on songs together, so you can't even say that over he's over a decade ago. Yeah. But he's an anti Drake. You know what Kendrick Lamar is closer to, and I hate to say this, but this is what is true. Mm. He's closer to Eminem than he is to Jay Z. Eminem is the artist you know is talented, yeah, you really know different. he's good, but you're not bumping Eminem. Mm-hmm. You can say it with your chest, "Oh, that's a classic album. That's a good album." We've been to mad parties, all of us in this room, mm-hmm. where not one Kendrick song has been played. And no one had any problems with right. that. Kendrick is, is <laughs> yeah, but you play, you know, you play your Kendrick at home. No, but no, there's no. gonna be, but, but this Kendrick has songs, song, yeah. But Kendrick has songs to play in the party every time. Yeah, and again, he's like Eminem. We know he's talented. We, you don't hear Eminem songs in the party. Mm-hmm. He's more, he's more in that lane. The one thing I think everyone's missing, I think, for being objective, what Drake has accomplished in hip hop in general, yeah, has never been done, and is no one's even close to that. Right, like the the example is almost like Wilt playing. You know, in his era, mm-hmm. and he's averaging fifty. The next person is averaging twenty five. Okay. So it's like until when someone, when someone else comes in and a Michael comes in and like surpasses that, then we'll say okay, someone else is a go. But yeah. what Drake has accomplished is, to me, I feel like he should be goat like easily. And if you want to put him and Jay Z and they battle for that goat oh, spot, you really think that he is a uh, goat hip hop like goat rapper I, of all time? I think this he is should. Crazy. I, I don't think like, I don't think he's the best rapper. Or makes the best music. I yeah. rapper that I like more. But I, I'm if we're being really honest about. But you're putting. I think you're putting a little bit too much stock in the numbers. A little bit too much. It's, it's, a little bit it's, too much. It's not even that. It's to me. It's just the accomplishments, regardless of numbers. Yeah. Someone doing this from hip hop is he's honestly surpassing all genres. Yep. From hip hop. So when we talk about the Beatles and what they did when they were at their peak, mm-hmm. the Be- no one's gonna p- p- put down the Beatles ever. What they did, whether you like their music or not. Mm-hmm. Legendary. Drake is on that kind of stuff for hip hop, which is a young genre, mm-hmm. and no one has and no one has come close to that. Right. Okay. So for me, I'm like, if we're being objective, it's it's like if this guy is doing things we've never heard of, seen mm-hmm. all this kind of stuff, that I feel like he's the greatest. Right. Not my favorite, 
not the best rapper, not yeah. the most artistic rapper, not the best albums. But I think that he had this line on, on 5 a.m. in Toronto, which was 11 years ago, where he says, um, most number ones ever, how long did it really take me? Yeah. And to think that he's 11 years from that, when that was, what, four or five years into his career. And I think that what we need to really kind of think about is who's close to him. I think that the other rappers are aware that maybe you can get close to him while we do an album together or a mm -hmm. song together, but we're not actually close in terms of the influence and what we achieve yeah. and all that kind of stuff. And that's the difference is if you look at a basketball comparison, LeBron has four championships, so does Steph. Yeah. So by accomplishments, technically, you know, Steph has eight, has eight finals. They're close in those things. I agree. I think with Drake, there's so many things where no one's close to him. Right. I think that when we're talking about Goat Rapper, mm -hmm. um, your artistic quality, like the things that you actually create, has to be super important. You know? And I think that's the biggest issue for Drake is like, I want to say he has maybe what, like 11, like close to like 10 or 11. I'd say he has 13. Something crazy like that. Mm, I would say half of them yeah. are not not good <laughs> like half of them mm. are not good so if you're gonna be like the goat um your he's your he, artist your artistic production mm -hmm. has to be super super high that's why i would say when we're talking about like goat like mm -hmm. goat i actually would rank uh kendrick lamar ahead of him because his pro the things that he produces right that his name is on mm -hmm. is higher quality it is like the saturation of it is much much higher than drake's even though i understand like the mm -hmm. Um, I think Drake's artistic, again, his influence, his influence is actually like the further we go in music, just overall, mm -hmm. Drake's influence just becomes like enveloping of almost every, <laughs> like every artist yeah, from North yeah. America, right? So I would consider like the, both of them to me, they're top 10, like yeah, very yeah, yeah. easily, right? Um, I even think you could even talk about them in top five, right? But when it... For Drake, his mm. biggest thing is so actually so interesting when we talk about future. Cause I think Drake and Future have like the same problem. Where like the quality of music that they mm. put out is kind of hit or miss. They definitely have their classics. Yes, yes. Right. Yeah. But their biggest thing is actually the numbers and then artistic influence. But if you're talking about like mm -hmm. if you're going project for project, Drake actually starts to get hurt when you're getting to like the later stage yeah, of his yeah. career. Like those projects start to hurt him, mm -hmm. kind of like Friends, because mm -hmm. I I usually liken Drake to Friends a lot. Yeah, the later parts of it start to hurt the overall uh, conceptualization mm -hmm. of the project, so or of the TV show or the artist. Whereas Kendrick Lamar, it's like Seinfeld almost, right? Where it's just like every single fucking season, mm -hmm. this is gold. Right? It runs for less, but runs for shorter. No, no fall off. But there's no fall off, right? I'm interested so. to see how this conversation ages because I, I said this to someone um, a month ago. Is that I think 10 years from now, I think Drake will be known as the GOAT and I don't think it will be a conversation like it is now. Mm. Because I think that what he accomplished will just weigh so, like, look so big over hip hop. Yeah. That'll be like, okay, there's him and then everybody else. You know, it's kind of, it's almost like Taylor Swift. In a sense of like, you can sell really actually what kind of what Adele used to be, yeah. Before Taylor got got this popular, it was like, yeah, I was number one, but my number one is you know one fifth of what Adele sells. Mm -hmm. You know what? I actually don't even. I can't. Mm -hmm. You know, we can Drake to LeBron. I mm -hmm. think he's actually more like Wilt. I think he's actually approaching more like Wilt than LeBron to me. I I I, I don't agree with that because I think that he's playing against so many good players. So I think that. He's more like LeBron in the sense of he's in an era where there's so much talent. Yeah. So here, I'll it. give my my Wilt analogy before we leave because mm -hmm. I think we're about to end. Drake is like Wilt to me because astronomical numbers literally mm -hmm. nobody can touch. There's so many records that Will Chamberlain owns yeah. that people like. For example, the Demontis Sabonis record of yep. double doubles. People are like, oh yeah, he's broken the record for double doubles. Like actually, it's post merger. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's the record. <laughs> yeah, it's the record, quote unquote, because uh, Wilt Chamberlain was doing what better than uh, Demontis Sabonis was mm -hmm. before before the leagues even fucking merged. Yeah. Okay, so um, he's got to this point where the numbers are so astronomical. Mm -hmm. You can even you're you're trying to qualify everything else, you know, in a different way. Post merger since 1982, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah. Right. 
And I think that Drake has gotten to that point where it's it's so large that we're we're getting to a point now you can't even talk about numbers because like mm-hmm. Drake's like what what do you what do you mean like yeah. you can't talk about. But then you talk about oh, okay like when he's competing ab- against the people that were his contemporaries, mm-hmm. people were beating him, right? People like Bill Russell beat Will Chamberlain multiple mm-hmm. times, right? Will Chamberlain only has two rings. Drake, mm-hmm. right? Had but they played for a ton of years mm-hmm. again. Drake has been going on for fifteen years now. Yeah, right. He only he has a handful. I would say a handful of classics. I, he has like I would mm-hmm. say three, mm-hmm. right? But then he's around other people again, like Kendrick Lamar, where it's literally every time, like it's pure quality, right? Mm-hmm. And I would say Kendrick Lamar has Section Eighty, right? To Pimp a Butterfly, Good Kid, Mad City, <coughs> right? <coughs> where he has these, he has. It these, wasn't meant to be. I know he has these <laughs> classic albums, but then he has no drop off. Damn, mm-hmm. isn't really a big drop off. Mr. Mel is not really a big drop off, right? So then he also, ha- and then we're also, you know, black the fucking Black Panther uh, soundtrack. So there's, like, shit like that where it's, like, when you're comparing them at the time when they were competing against mm-hmm. each other, like, their skills against each other competing against each other, yeah. Kendrick Lamar is actually technically better. So that's why I'm, like, he's actually closer to Wilt Chamberlain than to I don't, I don't agree with that one. But we, we're, we, can, we can wrap up in yeah. a bit. I, I think, you know, we've uh, exhausted this Drake versus Kendrick thing. Yeah. Kendrick, to notice me, J. Cole not even in the discussion. No, no, he he has to earn his spot. He has to earn his spot. <laughs> um, but I I I do think that this is very much almost like an inside versus outside argument mm-hmm. in a sense because I think that when we when we had our argument about future a few months ago, mm-hmm. influence was the number one thing you kept bringing up, mm-hmm. and that's when I think of what Drake's accomplished. I think of influence more than the numbers. Yeah, and I think Drake's influence compared to Kendrick Lamar's influence. It dwarfs it. Yeah. And I guess that's why I always say he gets the push from being the anti-Drake is that there's a huge group of, group of people who wouldn't even dare listen to Kendrick over Drake, not even one time. And I think that the influence of Drake of being that guy in hip hop, it's it's similar to the the early 2000s when we had a lot of those pop rappers, the Jaw Rules, the Nellies, even the Ludacris. And I think that in some way, Drake has a lot of those uh, qualities, mm-hmm. but is more respected than them, but not as respected as a Kendrick or a DMX or Nas or someone yeah. like that. And so I think that's the, the 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 draw of both sides of the coin of if you are more a most deaf person, you're more a black star person, mm-hmm. you're rolling more with Kendrick. And I think if maybe you're, if you're not on that side, Drake maybe makes more sense to you. And I think that this is this is. Where hip hop has become where we have this divide of yeah. we have to choose sides. Um, <laughs> I'm, I'm on Kendrick's side. You're choosing the Drake side. I'm trying to be objective. I, I don't think so. I, I haven't seen Drake in person. I've seen Kendrick multiple times. Uh-huh. I'm trying to be objective because again, I, I think if this was sports, like it's kind of like Wayne Gretzky. Anyone knows hockey? Wayne Gretzky, his you know hold on the record book yeah. is insane. And if we take numbers out of it, just go influence. Mm-hmm. It's like think of 30 rappers who are they have their own fan bases. Where their favorite, you no, know, their biggest song is a Drake song. Yeah. So to me, I'm just trying to be objective in that way of if this was sports and someone had this kind of lead on the record book and it was credible. And that's why I, I think Wilt is not fair because I'm saying credible as he's more respected than just a Nelly who is more seen as a straight pop rapper. Mm-hmm. I think Drake has more respect lyrically and just artistically where, again, if you, in sports, if someone had this lead on the record book, you'd be like, okay. That's who the greatest is. Yeah, but just like Wilt, Wilt was doing these incredible numbers. But if you talk to the contem- if you talk to the contemporaries at the mm-hmm. time, you you would ask who's better, Wilt or Bill Russell. Drake is more like Bill they Russell. Would, would, he's, a, he's, he's he's Wilt. Drake is more like Bill Russell. Honestly. I don't think it's like I don't because again he's winning every year. No, but in this <laughs> in this scenario, right? Mm-hmm. If like just it's the exact comparison, if you would talk to the contemporaries mm-hmm. at this time, you'd be like, who is the who is the best rapper right now, Drake or Kendrick Lamar? They would say Kendrick Lamar, you know, right? We, and we just gotta like, find a way to do a poll. And just like with the Will Chamberlain thing, like Will Chamberlain is doing all this crazy stuff, mm. right? But if you talk to the players at the time, they would be like, Bill Russell is better than Will Chamberlain. I, I I actually disagree with you, and we gotta find a way to do a poll. But I think if okay. you actually polled rappers who are in the game right now, mm-hmm. most of them would say Drake. I think that I think I think honestly that the fans have a different view than the actual musicians. That's why I think Drake's gonna be considered the GOAT in ten years because I think. As these musicians get older, not in the game as much, they're going to start saying that Drake is the GOAT and that Drake is this and Drake is that. 
and the fans are going to kind of follow that lead and be like, you know what? Well, if uh, Freddie Gibbs said Drake is a goat, well, then Drake is a goat. <laughs> well, if uh, Bryson said Drake is a goat. And I, 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 I've seen it already start in the past few mm-hmm. years, but that's my prediction for the future. Okay. That's my last words. All right. I think in 10 years, Drake will be considered the goat and this whole conversation will be a fun memory. Okay, we'll see. Thank you, everybody, for tuning into the Album Mode Live version of Soundbites. Um, we were gonna. Oh, you know what? Mm. We'll save it. We'll save it. We'll save yeah, it. Yeah. We were gonna. There was gonna be some other conversations, but we'll save it for now. Thank you, everybody, for tuning in for the uh, Album Mode Live Sound Bites, the part of Album Mode where we're talking about the music, the culture, and the internet, and how those three things intertwine, create the music culture that we have today. Uh, Adriel. You're a Kendrick hater, but it's okay. I still love you. Make sure you know yourself and know your worth. Later days.